Captain John Davis stepped onto the bridge of the ISS Intrepid, pride swelling in his chest. After years of construction, today was the day. The massive orbital station they had worked so tirelessly to build was finally complete and ready to open as a hub of interstellar trade and cultural exchange. Prepare to dock with the station John ordered his crew. The seasoned pilot, Michael Wilson, nodded and began expertly guiding their ship toward the enormous structure floating in space before them. It was shaped like a massive wheel, with a circular docking ring wrapped around a hollow center. Ships from all across the galaxy were converging on it, ready to be among the first visitors to the station. With a gentle bump, the Intrepid connected to the station's docking ring. John and his crew disembarked into the hub's arrivals area, a wide-open concourse filled with various alien species mingling together. The diversity of life was astounding. John spotted seven-foot-tall Regellians with their purple, crystalline skin, diminutive greys with their large oval eyes, and everything in between. Captain on deck Michael called out with a smile. The various aliens stopped and turned toward John, applauding and hooting in appreciation. While Michael and the rest of the Intrepid's crew were pivotal in constructing the station, John's leadership as head of the project had made it all possible. John smiled and waved, tamping down his instinct to shy away from the attention. It was humbling to receive such a warm welcome. A four-armed grow ash delegate approached John, his green scales glinting under the concourse's lights. On behalf of the Interstellar Alliance, I want to formally thank you and your people for constructing this remarkable station, he said, his voice clear despite his reptilian features. We have high hopes that this grand hub will usher in a new era of prosperity and collaboration for all our peoples. Please, enjoy everything our member species have to offer. John shook two of the delegates' hands firmly. The honor was ours, he replied. Humanity is thrilled to host visitors from across the galaxy. We look forward to learning from you as much as you learn from us. The delegate nodded graciously before moving aside, allowing John and his crew to finally enter the station proper. John took a deep breath, ready to take it all in. The inside of the massive ring was similar to a wide promenade lined with shops, restaurants, cultural exhibits, and more. Beings of all kinds filled the area. A cluster of spider-like Hulians examined human art and music. The avian Oro Aku sampled Earth cuisines. Regellian children watched a puppet show depicting a famous human folktale. John was astounded to see so many different species not just coexisting but actively celebrating each other. He always had faith that uniting the peoples of the galaxy through trade and culture was possible, but to see it in action was beyond his greatest hopes. Michael came up beside the captain, also visibly moved. We did it, he said. I'll admit I thought you were crazy when you first came up with this idea. But this is even more incredible than I imagined. John clasped his friend's shoulder. This is just the beginning. Imagine the friendships that will form, the knowledge that will be shared. Look, he pointed to a Grisarian negotiations expert enraptured by a human jazz quartet. That's what this station is all about. The two men continued through the promenade, stopping frequently to interact with the diverse attendees. John practiced his still shaky Regellian language skills with some merchants, while Michael allowed a curious group of greys to study his hair follicle patterns. After sampling some Oro Akumun berry wine, John and Michael arrived at the station's crown jewel, a massive zero-gravity amphitheater modeled after the ancient Greeks. It was designed to hold delegations from every species on the station. The first intragalactic council would soon be held here. Looking around at the mix of cultures collaborating and reveling, John saw the bright future he always envisioned being born. There were bound to be misunderstandings and hurdles, but he had faith they could work through them. As long as they faced challenges together. Michael gently shook the captivated captain's shoulder. We should make the rounds to the human exhibits before the big welcome dinner tonight. I heard the chef is making authentic earth pizza. John chuckled. Lead the way he took one last long look at the diverse crowds mingling happily. This grand hub would change the galaxy forever, and humanity would guide the way. As they walked, John spotted a familiar face Lelon, a Regellian historian he'd bonded with while establishing trade protocols. Lelon's four tentacle-like arms waved eagerly for them to come over. Captain Davis. It brings me joy to see you again, Lelon said, his voice melodic. What do you think of our hub so far? John grinned. Lylon. It's incredible. I can't believe this day is finally here. Lylon's crystalline skin rippled in agreement. Indeed. 
I must congratulate you again on conceiving this visionary project. We Rigelians were skeptical at first. But being here now, seeing all of our cultures connect, has convinced even our most xenophobic leaders. Michael nodded. If we can get Tonro to come around, we can convince anyone. They all laughed. Tonro was an infamously isolationist Rigelian politician that protested the Grand Hub project from the beginning. Tonro will come to see the light, Lan said. In the meantime, please let me show you our cultural exhibits. Lilan led them further down the promenade. The Rigelian exhibits featured art with hypnotic geometric patterns, haunting crystal wind instruments, and abstract sculptures that seemed to defy physics. Michael was transfixed by their cybernetics display, which showed how they could grow adaptive biocomputers within their bodies. Fascinating Michael muttered, meticulously examining a sample biosynthetic brain computer interface. We've theorized technology like this, but haven't cracked the symbiosis process. Leland's head frills fluttered proudly. Our species has always melded biology and technology. Please feel free to collaborate with our technicians during your stay. Definitely, Michael said. John smiled as his friend rapidly fired questions at the Rigelian engineer. Exchanges like this were exactly what he envisioned when conceiving of the hub. After exploring the Rigelian exhibits, John got directions to the human cultural section. As they entered, John saw displays educating visitors about Earth history, cuisine, music, theater, and more. Roving tour guides answered questions and offered hands on activities. One booth featured paintings by Van Gogh and Rembrandt, while an artificial intelligence recreated their artistic techniques before the audience. Nearby, a fusion band blended human jazz and Grisarian folk melodies to an intrigued crowd. The aroma of cooked earth food wafted from the dining exhibit, where an Oro Aku delegation sampled pot roasts and souffles. John was relieved to see the human exhibits portraying his people positively. He knew some species saw humanity as aggressive upstarts who advanced too quickly. But the truth was they deeply valued art, culture and connection, just like everyone else. This hub could help their galaxy see that truth. After enjoying a surprisingly accurate Neapolitan pizza, John prepared to give his opening speech at the welcome dinner. He now realized the station was even greater than his boldest dreams. It was a living, thriving embodiment of unity through diversity. John stepped up to the auditorium stage before thousands of assembled delegates, Rigelian Oro Aku, Grisarians, Hulians and more all gazed up in shared anticipation. He took a deep breath. Friends, I stand here today both humbled and hopeful. The Grand Hub represents a new era for our galaxy, one of cooperation, not division. Here, we have the chance not just to trade goods, but to share our cultures and ideas freely. John continued speaking from the heart. As he did, he saw nods and smiles spread throughout the diverse crowd. They understood each other perfectly. This was merely the beginning. The true work of building connection between worlds started today. John had never been more ready to lead humanity into a galactic fellowship of species. Their future shined brighter than the most distant stars.